The coalition of Northern Group CNG has said that with the arrest of Namdi Kanu and Sunday Boho, uh, also no, Sunday Boho, also known as Sunday Adeyemo, uh, the government should go beyond pro prosecution to digging up and exposing their sponsors and the agenda behind them. The pan yoruba social political uh, organization, Afenifera, has responded to the arrest of Igboho, saying that though they're surprised, it was still studying the situation of events before making a formal statement. Kanu was arrested in Kenya, while Igboho was reportedly arrested in the Benin Republic. Well, um, while allegedly trying to flee to Germany, this is the report that we've gotten so far. Well, to discuss this and, of course, the security implications. Uh, we have Dennis Amakri, a former assistant director with the Department of State Security, DSS, and we have Iniba Gifiong, who is a legal practitioner. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you. Great. Thank you. I I'm going to start with you, Mr. Amakri, because this is obviously a security situation. The last time I spoke about this issue of Namdi Kanu, and then, of course, the DSS um, going to the house of Sunday Boho, um, the, the, the security expert that we had on had said that um, the, the way that government was handling this situation was giving these non-state actors more um, airtime, more um, visibility than they should have, you know, on a normal day. But I want to hear from you what you think, you know, the, the implications, the security implications uh, for these arrests and the way that it is being handled, uh, you know, might be on the Nigerian state. Uh, yes, uh, thank you for having me. Um, yes, I agree. I agree that uh, we are giving a lot of airtime to non-state actors, uh, especially the terrorists and bandits, you know, who have been uh, harassing the country for so long. Uh, but um, about uh, Namdi Kanu and uh, Igboho, that's a different case altogether. Uh, Namdi Kanu's situation, I think, uh, is uh, something bordering on treason. Um, and, um, well, I think the courts have to decide on it. Uh, he skipped bail, he ran away, and then he was picked up and brought. So, uh, I think uh, for uh, a country that um, operates under the rule of law, he should have his time in court to defend himself. His lawyers will be there to defend him. Uh, on Igbo's case, I think people are becoming too emotional about it because uh, the narrative right now is that he's a, a Yoruba nationalist uh, fighter. But uh, the reason that uh, the DSS gave was that they had intel about a cache of arms in his house. And then, of course, they went there and they found the arms. And now, he is to appear in court to defend why he is carrying arms. You know, like they say, if you are a diplomat, and then, of course, you have immunity, but if you, if you, if you are found with gun, you stop being a diplomat and you now become a soldier. So, um, if he is saying that the arms don't belong to him, like some people have said, then let them appear in court, and then, of course, talk about it. That's what the cases of the lawyers are. Uh, the lawyers will be there to defend him or to, to you know, to prosecute him. Uh, the, but the idea of running away also spoils his case because yeah. he's now showing just like Kanu, you know, you don't but, run but, away. But can I come in there because I, yes. I, was, I was waiting for you to land. Namdi Kanu did make a case saying that the reason why, and, and I'm, I'm not his counsel, but he did say that the reason why he ran was because he was afraid for his life. And we can see a clear case of almost a similar case of what happened to Namdi Kanu, where his house, his family home was sacked, uh, gunshots and uh, people were allegedly hurt. Same thing for Sunday Boho. In the middle of the night, his house is ransacked. Uh, someone is shot dead, blood everywhere. Um, and, and the community, you know, seems to be threatened. Um, Maybe the modus operandi of the Secret Service or the DSS is, is the reason why these people are running for their lives. Because what is wrong with the Department of State Security inviting this man as they've been inviting other politicians? Uh, and for the case of Namdi Kanu, I'm just also saying, um, maybe that's the reason why these people keep running for their lives, because they feel very threatened. I mean, especially for a person who's never really killed somebody, but has been agitating uh, well, for an independent well, state. Have to. 
you have to understand uh, the underground water that runs in these particular cases. You know, what people see on the surface is exactly not what is going on. Namdi Kanu has been directing people in Nigeria to do certain things, burn down police stations. He has asked them to do certain things. He has even put bounty. Where did he? Where, where of, did he? On the, on the head of a of, of a seven of a seven governor. Okay. So when you when you see people like that, non-state actors that are violent is different from non-state actors that just. How many people have gone to? Let put it. Let put it this way. How many people have gone to raid Ganifa Oyemi's house with guns? Because there are no guns there. And when they go there, he's ready to follow them. He goes to court and he has his day in court. And they release him and he goes away. You know, in the case of uh, Igbo, there was gun. There was a how, gun How fight. can we tell that there were guns there? And, and I yeah, mean, there was a gun again, fight. Again, permit me, and I'm not in any way speaking for Igbo, but I'm saying that there have been cases where we have, as normal citizens, seen and heard police officers tell us that they will shoot you and give you the gun and say that you are the one who carried the gun. So why would uh, the average... Like that, no, 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 I'm no, just no. saying, I'm just saying... It's not the same kind of I, case, I'm just, Again, I'm just uh, saying... Us, I'm just yes. saying, if, if Iboho is saying that those guns do not be, belong to him... Yeah, uh, let and, him and go to court. Let him go to court and prove it, okay? Let him go to court. There is no problem with that. If somebody... Allegations, there are still allegations. Exactly. If he goes to court, he will do that. But there was a gun fight where even a DSS officer was shot in the arm, okay? So we are not going to say, um, what happened? They shot themselves or what? Hmm. Let everybody go to court. We believe in the rule of law, and it's in Nigeria, I think... Even the lawyers will tell you they want him to have his day in court. In court. Mm. That's why the lawyers exist. And so let them go to court and then either defend or prosecute. And talking about lawyers, um, let's let's take a legal aspect or a legal view of this, you know, um, story. We have seen the Namdi Kanu situation happen and now we're having the Sunday Boho situation. Um where do you where, where do you think that you know the government is coming from and and does Namdi Kanu um, one way or the other have any because again I remember that he had two shorties who um, had to shorty for him when he was given that bail uh, before he jumped and disappeared from the country and for Sunday Boho just as um, Mr. Macri has said they all should deserve their day in court but again I'm going to ask the first question that I asked Mr. Macri. Why are we giving so much attention to these non-state actors as opposed to the people who are really terrorizing the country? The, the reason why, you know, attention is being paid to Sandy Boho and Namdi Kano by the Buhari regime is, is because those are the persons, you know, whose activities the president or the government is emotionally invested in. By that I mean, those are the persons that are of interest, persons of interest to the security agencies and the president. The Boko Haram that is killing people, the terrorists in the north that are being called bandits, the headsmen that are rampaging, murdering, raping people across the country, they are not of interest to the SSS. And, and I, I have problem when the media keeps saying DSS. Because, you know, there is no agency known to law at DSS. That is part of the problem that we have. The agency that is known to law is State Security Service that you can abbreviate as SSS. I don't know where this name DSS came from. It is part of the impunity that we have to address. If an agency is established by law, under the National Security Agencies Act, with the name State Security Service, we should stick to that name. Because when we keep saying DSS, you see, that name has now become a representation of impunity. And I listened to Mr. Macheri saying they should have their day in court. Does the SSS believe in the judiciary? Does it believe in the rule of law? The people who were arrested in Iboho's house, have they not been detained beyond 24 hours? Which court have they been arraigning? The people that were arrested at Dunami's church for mainly wearing Buhari must go t-shirt by the same agency. For almost over two weeks now, have they been taken to court? 
when Showare was arrested and detained and a court gave an order for his release, is it not the same order, the same agency that defied the court and refused to release him in, in flagrant disobedience to the court? Is it not the same agency that invaded the federal court in Abuja? Is it not the same agency that invaded our National Assembly? Is it not the same agency that is on rampage? Arresting, violating the rights of citizens? So let him stop taunting us. Let him stop taunting us to say they should have their day in court. This pretend that the DSS believe in the judicial process has to stop. And let us get this clearly. Whatever Igbo, whatever Namdekanu are fighting for, it is within the contemplation of the right to self-determination, which is even recognized under Nigerian law. Under Article 20 of the African Charter on Human and People's Rights, Ratification and Enforcement Act, there is nothing that amounts to terrorism in saying you don't want to be a Nigerian anymore. But then Mr. But, but, but then Mr. Macri made, made, made a topic. case. Mr. Macri made a case saying that look, Namdi Kanu, as 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 he said, and I'm, I'm quoting him, uh, had had put a bounty on the governor's head. He has has mandated people to burn down a police station. I haven't seen that press release by Namdi Kanu, by the way. Um, but of course, he's saying that they know more, they have more information than we do because they're the state, uh, they're the Department of, you know, uh, State Security Service, and, and they have more information than we would probably have. And so he's saying that maybe these people um, are, are inciting violence and causing some form of obstruction in the country. And that's why, in your words, they are persons of interest to the government and the State Security Service. Look, what I'm saying is that let us stop pretending that this is an effort by the government to enforce the law or to uphold the rule of law. This is just a regime that is opposed to anybody that expresses an opinion that they are not comfortable with. It has nothing to do with whatever Namdi Kanu was saying. When the same government pretended that they wanted to try him and they filed the charges before Justice Nyaku, why did the military invade his, his house? Why did they assault his father? Why did they kill his supporters even when the charge was pending? If he had violated his bail condition, did they go back to the court? So let us stop this hypocrisy that there is a, a, a government that is interested in enforcing the law. This has nothing to do with enforcement of the law. This is just about a regime that is determined to quell all form of dissent. That mm -hmm. is what it is about. Mr. And they keep saying that the Kano has done this, Ibo has done this. Do they genuinely believe in the judicial process? I'm just telling you now that even Ibo supporters were arrested, they have been kept for, for how many days now? The conditions that they should not be detained beyond 24 hours, why are they still in custody? Mm. Have they been given access to legal representation? So you cannot be pretending that you want to enforce the law and you do not comply with the constitution. And you are killing people. And they came out to say, we only kill two people. Those officers that killed two people, two of the both supporters that they have admitted to, have they been tried? Have they been dismissed? Have they been arraigned for murder? He said that there was an exchange of gunfire. So those exercise officials who were there, did they have some immunity from bullets that none of them was killed? I refuse to believe them. Let them produce the CCTV. Because the boy has said there was CCTV in his house. They should produce it for Nigerians to see, for us to believe. Why did they have to invade his house in the dead of the night? Why did they have to shoot guns into his vehicles and destroy properties in his house? Is that a part of legitimate and democratic, civilized way of law enforcement? I think that we this should, I, I, I think we should let Macri answer this, this question. Mr. Macri, would you care to respond? Yes, I think uh, the, my uh, learned friend there is uh, being emotional about the whole thing because he's saying that uh, the government does not believe in the rule of law. Why is it that when Kanu was brought back, he was taken to court? If they don't believe in the rule of law, in fact, they would have taken care of him overseas or of him bring him here and lock him away. What do you mean by but taking care of him overseas? Yes, he was taken to court, and of course, he has, he has his day in court, which has been rescheduled. But you see, one thing about these things is that, yes, people, there, there is nothing wrong with people agitating to, for self-determination, you know. And um, that is a normal thing that people do, and it takes years and years sometimes. We we'll talk about uh, people who want the uh, uh, Republic of Ireland and they belong to it and so many years have gone by. But when you start carrying arms or start, you know, just like in Israel, where they started shooting missiles into Israel, Israel is not going to fold his hands and say, 
oh, we are under the rule of law. We believe in the human rights. Mr. Macri, I have seen, I, again, I am not a spokesperson for either of these gentlemen, but I have seen rallies that have been organized by Igboho, and I did not see guns. Um, yes, you have seen rallies. And, and I haven't seen guns. And at those yes. rallies, they are advocating for the Yoruba nation. Yes. And, the, and the when you say they start carrying dispersed, guns... Right? The I, rallies were not dispersed. Yes. I even when, attended one. When you say they start one. carrying guns... The rallies were not dispersed. They were not they dispersed. Were just, they, they carried out their rallies... And then people were singing, and nobody dispersed. But, but then, but then the rally that was that happy. was supposed to happen in Lagos, or that tried to happen in Lagos, till today we're still waiting to hear about the little girl that was shot at by police officers um, while people were trying to, in quote, rally for the Yoruba nation, um, or whether they call it a rally or a protest. It was it was peaceful, but then it turned into something bloody because policemen shot at a girl and that girl died um so yes. were they got were there guns in lagos those were no, rallies that um, so when you say no, they start um, carrying guns i want you to explain to us where the guns come in yeah mary you have to put it in perspective if you have to put it in perspective lagos had had problems i've seen the one in oshu i've seen the one in oyo where Ibo had a big following, and they had protested, and no problem. Nobody shot anybody. Nobody dispersed anybody. Because it is their right. It's their right. Even uh, IPOB has been demonstrating in the East. It is only when guns become involved. Now, in the case of Lagos, the Commissioner of Police have come out to say that, see, we had a very bad experience in NSAS. And because of that, we will not... And who started the shooting again for NSAS? I recorded every single can I, day. Can I finish, at that, can No, I no, finish, I just want to put... I, I, I'm I sorry, finish? I'm going to let you speak. Because we keep going back to NSAS as, as, uh, as a, an example of sorts as to why we cannot have peaceful protest in Lagos. I recorded... I was reporting from that toll gate every day. At no point did we see that protest become not peaceful until the day that soldiers were dispatched to shoot at protesters. And, and so when the government say, makes reference to that, I'm wondering, who made that protest become not peaceful in Lagos? And why is the Lagos state government so afraid of any other protest? I agree with you that NSAS started peacefully, you know, and it, processed, it proceeded peacefully, the government was even responding to the NSAS people. There was no problem until we had involvement with soldiers. I agree with you. And of course, there was no reason whatsoever for that intervention because everything was going on very well. But where the government or the police in Lagos is feeling worried because they felt that, okay, my house had been burnt before, and I, don't, I will not take any chances for them. I'm not a spokesman for the police. But police felt that they have to preempt whatever that might happen again mm. by not allowing any kind of protest. But if you want, you can go and talk to the police and you can ask them why they have to stop a peaceful protest. protest. Mm. Okay, uh, Iniba, we're out of time, so I want you to quickly just wrap this up. Where do you see this going? Uh, because people are asking that um, Igboho and Kanu be given a fair um, you know, day in court. Do you see fairness playing out at the end of the day? The, the, the whole thing is a sham, and nothing will, I can tell you. I doubt if anything will come out of it. Does this mean, so that, you, does this mean that you do not even trust the legal process and the profession that you belong to? I'm not saying the legal process. The government does not believe in the legal process. Let us stop. Like I said, this is just a pretense that oh, we want to take this to court. This is not about trial. This is not about prosecution. This is not about criminality. Because if this is about criminality, we know who the real criminals are. I don't know whether you've seen the video of the EMEA of Taraba State that gave Esmen 30 days to vacate forests in Taraba. That is the kind of situation that we are. Where is the SSF? Where is the intelligence? Why is the intelligence so good in kidnapping somebody in, in Kenya and abducting him to Nigeria, but the intelligence cannot see the kidnappers, cannot see the henchmen that are killing people across the country? Why is the intelligence with Boko Haram? It took ISIS to kill 
Sheka. Where was our SSS? Where was their intelligence? So this is about where they are we interested. Have to go. They don't. They have the resources. They have the capacity, but they don't have interest in fighting crime. Okay. They are interested. We need, to go. Like we need to go. Thank you very much. Iniba Refiong is a legal practitioner. Uh, Dennis Amakri is a former director of the DSS. Thank you, gentlemen, for being part of this conversation. Thank you for having me. All right. Well, at this point, I want to thank you all for being part of the conversation. We will see you tomorrow. And Barakadusala to all our Muslim friends. Good night.